Hey guys, Vikram Prolikar from the Test Automation team. And in today's session, we're going to be talking about model-based testing. So what exactly is model-based testing? Well, it's a software testing technique where the behavior of a system under test is checked against predictions made by a model. Where does this model come from? Well, that's where most of the test case development occurs. A business user who has innate subject matter experience about an application is responsible for designing that model and mapping the behavior of an application as different data is passed through it. Once the model is created, AI can be leveraged to actually generate the test cases. So time isn't spent creating test cases, rather creation of the model. And it's very easy to change any test cases because you're changing a model. So if test cases are automatically generated for you, why is this not more, a more common testing technique? Well, there's actually inherently several challenges. However, UiPath Test Suite has specifically been designed to solve them. The challenges are that there's a very steep learning curve with traditional model-based testing. A formal specification and experience is required to generate these models. And because of the long generation time, it takes a while to actually get that first test case out there. In addition, because of the true linking between the model-based tests and the model itself, anytime a model is changed, it might result in completely different test scenarios, thus not really aligning for historical testing. However, UiPath Test Suite has several features and functionality such as object repository, data-driven testing, and a free academy to easily be able to train a large number of resources to use UiPath and replicate any value that you might experience from traditional model-based testing tools while taking a unique approach to testing itself. So let's take a look at where UiPath falls on the model-based testing spectrum. For manual testing, you of course have to manually create the test case documentation, define the test case, predict the outcome. There isn't any scripting involved, but you have to manually execute and check the outcome of the test. With scripting, you still have to manually create the test case documentation, define the test outcomes, script the test, but the execution of the test and checking of the outcome is automated. With Test Suite, we take more of a hybrid approach. You have the option of either creating test case documentation or a model with things like state machines. However, defining the test case is a bit more automated because AI is involved to help identify objects and scripting of the test is a bit more automated because you can take advantage of features like data-driven testing and execution templates to help with the generation of your test automations. So the first feature of note for UiPath Test Suite is the ability to easily create these model requirements and specifications with UiPath Task Capture. Task Capture will allow an application SME to create an application business model using various VPMN icons, as well as swim lanes. You'll be able to take screenshots for each action and actually automatically capture required metadata to pass from the business SME to the developer team to ultimately accelerate any timelines for development. In addition to a model, the beauty is that you do get robust test case documentation automatically. The next aspect of model-based testing is the actual technical interface model. And for this, UiPath has object repository. In UiPath Studio, on the right-hand side, we'll see object repository. To create one, all you have to do is enter this recording mode. You'll be able to add a specific application, such as UiBank, and then be able to capture all the elements on the screen simply by clicking a button. Our AI computer vision will automatically detect all the elements on the screen, and you'll be able to either select all or pick and choose which ones you want to capture. The cool thing is UiPath automatically will also help you identify anchors to ensure that even if these objects move around on the screen, you'll still be able to reliably interact with them. Now that our object repository is created, We'll see how this combines with generation of test cases a bit later on. Moving on to the business information model, UiPath has the unique ability to allow a developer to create 
state machines. State machines, also known as state charts, allow a tester to define the resulting state of an application based on different data inputs and system conditions of an application. There are typically a finite number of states and the behavior of the system is analyzed in between each states and only based on specific logic conditions will it move on to a different state. It keeps going through this model until it results in a final state. Again, let's take a look at this within UiPath Studio. In UiPath Studio, to create a state machine, all you have to do is go to the new file location and select state machine. Ultimately, a state machine is a flowchart where you can define specific application states or a final state. In order to create the automation, for each state, you can define entry criteria, exit criteria, and draw arrows or define transition criteria between states. Since I've already defined a technical object model, it's very easy to use these objects inside of my business model. Simply need to drag and drop them into the center location and combine them with a UI action, such as a type into or a click activity. Now this state machine actually has four different scenarios. I have two phases, either an initialization phase or a teardown phase. And depending on that, I can either be logged into the application or not logged in. So let's go through a state where I'm logged in and an initialization phase. In order to proceed, I can simply go to the transition. Let's say I'm already logged in. I'm gonna then check if that user is logged in and then move on to the check user phase. I'll be able to check a user with this entry criteria and then if I already have the correct user, I'll be able to proceed and continue with the test case. Test case is a final state, and so I'll only have the entry criteria for this one. Similarly, I could have taken a number of different pathways, but that's how state machines work. Now that I have my business model and my technical model, the final phase is how does UiPath do the AI generation of test cases? Well, UiPath opts not to use AI because we want a tester rather than randomly defining test cases to have control on the scope of a test case. And so we provide AI based features to help with creating these test cases in a faster manner. Two of these features are execution templates and data-driven testing. Returning back to Studio, for something like execution templates, this allows me to put a wrapper of repeated steps, such as initialization and teardown, around all of my test cases. This is an example of a test case template where I've simply invoked my state machine as a reusable component. As you recall, there were two phases. The initialization phase is what I put at the beginning, and the teardown phase is what I put at the end. I can establish and assign this execution template to my test case here. Now, once I've defined a test case, I can also pass as much data as I want to it. In order to add test data and make a test case a data-driven test, all I need to do is navigate to my project pane, simply right-click my test case, and add test data to it. I can select test data sources from either an Excel file or UiPath's own data service. In this case, I'll go ahead and select a file. The test data is imported, and here you'll notice I have two test scenarios. So again, I've simply just created one test case, but now it'll operate regardless of the initial or final state of an application and execute multiple data scenarios as I have defined in my test case template. To execute this during design time, all I need to do is navigate to my test explorer and run my workflow. You'll see my robot spin up and UI Bank is actually on a random page. It's already open. However, that won't impact my test case because of our state machine. The state machine is going to recognize that UI Bank is already logged in. It's going to check the user that it's logged in as and then determine whether any action is needed or if it can proceed with the test case.
In our second data-driven test, we're actually already logged out. And so the test case will be able to identify the state of the application, log in, and then proceed with applying for a loan. At the end, we'll tear down by logging out. And that's a quick demo of UiPath's unique approach to model-based testing. Till next time, bye. Thank you.